Welcome to Session Sunday. Hi guys, it's Jack Edwards and today's session is going to be based around counter attacking. But before we move into today's session, make sure you give us a like and subscribe and if you missed last week's session, click on the link above. So today's session will be based around counter attacking, beginning with a 3v2 scenario and then moving on to a game related session. Firstly, let's look at today's setup. So the setup for the first part of the session today doesn't involve too much equipment. We've just got six cones, the rest is just wherever you want to base your players. So we've got two teams, we've got nine attackers and six defenders and one goalkeeper. So I was using 16 players for this session. You can vary from 12 to 16 players or you can go even higher above to maybe 18 or 20, depending on how many players you have and what you're looking and trying to work on. And if you want to do counter attacks, so maybe 4v3 or 5v4 or even 6v5, just making sure that always one team is outnumbered. So the cones here are eight yards away in distance because we want some short sharp passing before moving into the counter attacks. So part one, we'll have a certain passage of play before we then go and counter attack in a 3v2. And then the second part is very similar, but we just changed that passage of play. So what will happen is the ball will start in the middle here. So we have three teams, one team off, which is getting their rest after they will have attacked. So they get a bit of breathing space. The ball will get played in to the nearest man down. And then the ball will go out, back down again, then get switched across, back down again. And then it will get come back to the middleman. And then he has a decision which of the three attackers to play. So he can play the middle or either of the wide men. And then that's the trigger for the 3v2. So we have the two centre-backs who are going to be defending starting on the edge of the box. Because if they started too deep, it'd be too hard for them to get out. Would be unrealistic and it'd be too easy to score. Whereas if they're starting on the edge of the box, as soon as the attackers receive the ball, they can come in and put pressure on them, meaning the movement's got to be quicker. As soon as that ball goes into one of the three attackers, we are looking for them to then go forward quickly with runs, not just straight runs because that's too easy to defend. So if the middleman's got the ball, we're looking for the wingers to cross over, maybe go in behind, pull one of the defenders out for a through ball and then looking to finish. The man in possession doesn't have to pass the ball. He can keep driving into space, but that will only work if the two attackers who don't have the ball create space for that player. So if the middleman's got the ball again, if one attacker drags one wide, and then the other player takes the defender inside, it creates space out wide again for the players and on the ball to drive forward and finish. Or he might drive forward and eventually a defender will come across where he can square the ball and look for a finish there. The defender's goal is just to try and stop the team from scoring. Same with the goalkeeper. As soon as the ball reaches a stop, then the next three players will come in. The three attackers will make their way back behind the team here. And then the next two defenders will take their place on the 18-yard box. So there's lots of rest periods because it is intense, it is quick. We don't want people having too many goes too quickly because the standard and the quality will drop. If the players don't get enough rest, then the quality and the intensity will drop, meaning we won't get out of the session what we want, which is lots of goals, good counter-attacks, lots of fluid movement. There'll be a lot of people static, tired, not moving quickly, um, which will then result, obviously, in a lack of quality. So moving into the four-corner model for this week's session, starting off with technical and tactical, we're looking for lots of movement to receive the ball because in the middle zone, it's going to be lots of tight areas. And then the three attackers, we want them to movement to receive the ball from the people in the midfield so that they're creating space for them to then drive at the defence. Receiving on the half turn. So when it is tight in that middle zone, they're looking to play forward quickly. If a player's body's closed, then they can only go one way and that's backwards. Whereas if the body's open and they're receiving the ball on the back foot, they can instantly go forwards. Or if there's no forward option on, they can go sideways or backwards. Same with the players when they receive the ball from the midfield. If they're receiving with their back to goal, the defenders, it's easy for them to lock on. Whereas if they receive with an open body, they can see where the defender is and where their two attacking teammates are. We want them three attackers to be clinical in the final third. So not many touches in and around the box, looking for quick one-twos, being tight together and also spreading out. So lots of movement off the ball. And then when they are in and around the box, being decisive, finishing quickly and into the corners, leaving the goalkeepers and the defenders no chance to get near. In the psychological side of the game, awareness of space around them. So always scanning our shoulders, always checking space around us. When a player moves, can you go and take that vacated space? Decision making on the ball. So in the middle zone, when you're passing the ball, is that man going to be able to get it? If, if he's not, can we look somewhere else? 
we don't have to go forwards if there's no option we can go backwards and sideways and then when we're in the final third being decisive yeah trying to drive a goal quickly trying to score quickly and if you're not going to receive the ball how can you help that player who's, who is on the ball confidence to receive the ball so when you are receiving in tight areas it can be quite daunting because a player is going to be tight to you so that's why there's going to be lots of movement to receive and having confidence in your ability to turn out and look to play forward in terms of the physical side of the game, speed to move quickly on and off the ball when you've got the ball to drag quickly in defenders, when you haven't got the ball to move quickly to create space and also to create space for you and your teammates. Power to drive with the ball. So when you're in that final third, don't be afraid to drive with the defenders. Be confident in your ability, be able to go both ways and then look to finish. And then speed endurance and stamina endurance because the sessions will be intense because it is a tight area. So making sure that you can always last all the way through. And then finally, the social side, lots of communication with teammates. With it being a tight area, you need to tell each other when you've got man on, time and turn. When you vacate space for somebody, tell them where the space is going to be. In the final third, when somebody's running around you or running across the defender, noticing that, giving each other lots of praise as well. Obviously, when you're scoring, or there's going to be lots of chances missed as well. We will now watch an animation for this part of the session before moving on to the progression. Moving on to the progression for this part of the session, we're not changing anything with the setup or how we want to attack. It's still going to be 3v2 and this player is still going to get the same rest. We're just changing the passage of play. So obviously last time we knew how many passes and where the players were going to attack from. This time the coach will shout go at any given time. If a player, one of these three players has the ball, they will instantly play into the attackers. If one of the three attackers has the ball, they will instantly turn and go and attack the goal, making it more reactive for them so they don't know exactly when they're going to attack. Because as we know with transitions in football, they can happen at any given time. So it's up to the players to react quickly and still work on that decision making. We'll now move into our next animation before moving on to the game related session. Moving into the main part of our session, we've now got a 3v2 attack and overload in the final third. But the emphasis is on the Reds who are the attacking team to get the ball into that overload quickly as if they transitioned in the middle third getting the balls there and then looking to score. For the Blues, they've got two mini goals out wide here. And at the moment, at the start of the drill, it's 1v1 in the box here. So they're looking to take the man on quickly and, and score a goal. Or if a player plays into a Blue, he can join in and make it a 2v1. And if that does happen, it can become a 2v2 the defender can follow. In terms of the setup of the session, we're going with 25 yards width again. With... 25 yards in between the goal line and the first box, 15 yards in the middle, so there's got to be lots of movement, and then 10 yards in the end zone here. So the play will start with the coach, who will play into the one defender here, who will then look to play into the midfield zone, who've got to create space. There isn't that much space, so there's got to be lots of movement, using the height, width and depth, lots of interchange, creating space through, and then looking to play into our attackers to make it a 3v2 situation, looking to score quickly. Once they score, we start straight again from the coach. If the Blues win it back by, via the defenders or via the midfielders, they are looking to penetrate quickly and score a goal, basically winning the ball back and getting it high up the pitch. In terms of the teams, it's 8v8, but the Blues have got seven outfield players and one goalkeeper, whereas the Reds have got eight outfield players. In the middle, it's 4v4, so there's no overload here. And in this end zone here, it's 1v1. And then obviously we've got our attack and overload in the final third, 3v2. So we've really eliminated the fullbacks and the wingers from the Blues and the fullbacks and the centre-backs from the Reds. So the focus of the session is to create the 3v2 overloads, meaning we want that front three to be clinical, decisive and effective in the final third when they get the ball, driving quickly, looking to score instantly because we've created that space in the middle for them. We've transitioned really well. So now we're looking to be decisive and score some goals. We will now move into another animation before moving on to our first progression. So the first progression takes out the end zone and makes it a 5v5 in the middle. Same concept of playing in and looking to play through to the 3v2. But once the Reds do get the ball to the 3 up front, the player who plays that ball in or even dribbles across the line can join in to make it a 4v2 
And then the defender who's nearest can also go in to make it a 4v3. So they've got that extra person to attack, meaning if two players do go into the edge of the box and a wide man receives it, they've got an option to drop back and maybe switch the play or to play onto the edge of the box to finish. So then what we kind of got there is a transition for the Blues. So if the Blues do win the ball back in here and it's a 4v3 situation, they can instantly play in with the Reds down a player, have them to transition. They've got their player coming in as well from the defensive side, making a forward run, and they're still looking to score on either of them two goals, but now they don't have to pass the end zone. If they create space and they've got 10 yards to go, they can instantly just pass the ball into the empty net, meaning it's a ball through to a forward player or through the middle third. We will now move into another animation video before moving on to the final part of this week's session. We are now moving into the final part of this week's session. We've now taken out all of the zones and it's more like a game situation. So it's eight versus seven with the Blues having their keeper. So we're looking for the Reds to use their overload, for the Blues to make it hard and stay compact. So the Reds have got to play through and create overloads in wide areas using lots of width because they've actually got a bit more width now because we're going full width of an 18 yard box. So it gives the emphasis to stretch the pitch wide get some depth so then the space comes into the middle of the pitch and then when that happens a player will eventually come off his line moving space out wide for a player to drive in the final third and finish. As a challenge for the players you could create a scenario so the Blues could be 1-0 up or it could be a draw with 10 minutes to go and you could make a 10 minute timer and the Reds have got to try and win the game or come back from 1-0 down to get a draw so how do they react in them situations? Do they still play with the same principles which we've been asking for for the whole session? Or that they panic, get confused, start making bad decisions, which is where you'll see what we need to improve on with your players week in, week out, and you can stop it from there. Maybe have a little chat with the player and say, listen, we've been knocking it a bit too long, taking too many touches, not receiving on the half term. This is what we have to do in able to score. And it's a good test for them as well, because on a Saturday, it could happen very easily. With it still being quite tight and compact in here, we do need lots of movement. When, we, when the Reds have got the ball, they need to make the pitch nice and wide, leaving gaps in between for players to come into. When the ball comes into somebody, there's got to be lots of communication, moving the ball quickly. So if a man does press onto a red, he will leave space in behind to eventually maybe play two passes in to play forward. So like we said last week, maybe taking one step backwards to take two steps going forward. Don't be afraid to pass backwards. Don't be afraid to pass sideways. As long as we're keeping possession, recycling the ball and moving it quickly, we will eventually find the gaps. And then if the Blues do win it back, we step high as a team to win the ball in the middle third and then that's when we look to try and create our overloads, which we won't be getting every time, but if we get them two or three times in 10 minute spells, then we've done our job and we will get chances to score. We will now move into our final animation before concluding this week's session. Thank you for watching this week's session. For more content, follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. The links will be in the description below and we'll see you next week for another Session Sunday.